in the previous video we've seen that friction has many harms as well as many benefits so for example it wears our uh, slippers it wears our tires and it wears many parts of uh, machineries that are in contact and moving against each other so that causes uh, problems to us but if uh, but apart from that friction also has many benefits like friction allows us to stop our vehicles and it also allows us to walk and it also uh, allows us to use these uh, useful matchsticks by rubbing them against uh, by rubbing the matchstick head against this rough surface and that is how we light our matchsticks and also allows us to heat up our hands so in now here what what, what can we see so the simple um, thing that we can infer from this is that in some cases we need friction or we want high friction uh, for example in this case we want a lot of friction right if we have a high amount of friction in this case only then can we light up our matchstick if there was no friction here it would be very difficult for us to light up our matchsticks so in some cases like this or when you want to stop our uh, cars we need a high amount of friction but in other cases like parts of um, uh, parts of um, parts of machines that you don't want to wear off so in those cases we want very little friction so how do we achieve this well in this video and in the next video what we are going to do is we are going to look at methods that we use to increase or decrease friction so first let us just um, uh, look at the methods that we use to decrease friction so yeah so let us just quickly i'll first of all give you a few demonstrations of how we reduce friction and then we can look at the reason behind uh, gear working so how those methods work then we can look at that uh, so yeah the first very simple method is lubrication so what is lubrication well we there is, well, we apply uh, a, a fluid called a lubricant which may seem be maybe as simple as an oil and that will help us reduce friction uh, a simple example of lubrication can be seen here in this cycle uh, so here uh, i have a chain and uh, we have some gears here so these gears and the chain are in contact and they're moving so uh, in such cases when we have uh, moving parts that are in contact with each other obviously we don't have um, too much of relative motion here because the gears and the chain move in the same direction but yeah the basic idea is whenever we have such moving parts that are in contact with each other there are chances that we have some friction because obviously there is roughness here and so there will be friction and it is that friction uh, which so we know that friction causes wear and tear but we don't want our parts to wear right because if the parts start wearing out that is not a good thing we have to replace the parts so we want the friction to be as low as possible in such moving parts so such so example could be the chain and even this gear here that is moving uh, rotating along its axis and other such moving parts on the cycle we want uh, the friction uh, in them to be as low as possible so what we do is we apply a lubricant which maybe you, you for now you can think of think of that lubricant as simple oil so you might oil various parts in cars and in cycles so an oil is an example of a lubricant so you apply some lubricant which is just like oil uh, in the chain and other parts and that uh, reduces friction and it allows these parts to move freely uh, with less friction so that is one way of reducing friction and how that lubrication works we will see in a moment but here the first uh, thing is to understand that we can use lubricants which are like oils so another example would be when you have your doors that are squeaky so if, they, if your doors make a sound so you know the hinges in your doors if they begin to make sound what you can do is you can take some oil normal oil and put it in your hinges and that will reduce the friction in your uh, in the hinges of your door right, right? the part that uh, around which the door rotates and that will uh, reduce the friction and it will remove the squeaky noise so those are the those, so that is one way of reducing friction and uh, i'll quickly just show you a demonstration to show you how effective uh, lubricants can be so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take a given surface like this here 
and first i am going to show you how uh, much time it takes for the cycle to stop on a simple surface and then uh, to act as lubricant i am going to use water so obviously water is not a very good lubricant but I'm, what i'm trying to show you is that if i apply some lubricant which for to so, so to represent the lubricant i'm just going to use water so i'll just put some water on the surface and we'll show you how much difference it causes so obviously a better lubricant would be oil but i don't want to spill oil here that will cause problems so i'll just show you by putting some water how much difference it causes so it will reduce the friction uh, by some amount and then you can just observe that so yeah here we go So the point here that I want to show is that without the uh, water here, actually I use soapy water here. So without the soapy water, you could see that the cycle stopped without even skidding. But once I put here some soap, soapy water on the surface, and obviously there's some um, uh, already slip, there's some slipperiness already on the surface because it's smooth. So yeah, that made the so the lubrication, uh, which is soapy water in this case made the friction even lower and that is whether you know you observe the tire skidding because the friction wasn't enough and the tire kept on moving even after i had applied the brakes completely so that shows that soapy water can act as a lubricant similarly you can use oil and other lubricants so there are many custom made uh, uh, lubricants that are specific for uh, various jobs so for example you have lubricants for your chain you have other lubricants for other machinery and oil in general is uh, a lubricant which you can use in your day-to-day -day lives but never spill oil on your floor or soapy water on your floor because you can slip and break your head so that is one way of reducing friction uh, another way of reducing friction is to smoothing the surfaces so here you can see that i have my tires but the tires have the tires are in no way smooth so they have these projections and in the next video we'll see why are the projections there but yeah you can see the two tires are in no way smooth they're very 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 rough and that makes them uh, good at stopping but yeah if uh, after you know using these tires too much if i kept on breaking uh, just like i was doing right now so i would wear my tires off and they would become very smooth and after that i would have lowered the friction and that is another way of lowering the friction obviously i don't want to lower the friction between the floor and my tires because then i won't be able to break i don't want to be able to slow down so those, those are the two basic ways of uh, reducing friction one was using a lubricant to smoothen it and uh, yeah one last example of a lubricant is that i can't show you right now is the powder that you put on your carom board while playing carom so you want your mm, carom um, the pieces to slide smoothly on the carom board and so to reduce the friction there you use powder so those are the demonstrations so you could use uh, liquids like oil or soapy water or other lubricants to reduce friction you could use powder to reduce friction uh, and you can also smoothen things out by rubbing them and even that way you can uh, reduce the friction so those were the ways in which you can reduce friction now we'll quickly just look at uh, how these three uh, or two basic methods uh, work and the logic behind them so smoothing is very simple right if you rub something uh, friction causes wear and tear and it smoothens and simply the friction is reduced because the irregularities are reduced so that is clear we'll just look at how lubricants and the powder using ca on carom boards how that works we'll just have a look at that so here we go so here we are and now let us look at how lubricants and the carom powder board the carom uh, board powder work so here let me take the two two surfaces here is, let's say this is the first surface and i'm just exaggerating the uh, roughness of the surface but yeah these are the two surfaces here 
and these are the irregularities on the surface so this is the first surface that has irregular that is that has some irregularities and this is the second surface that has irregularities and now if we take the lubricant what actually the lubricant does is so let's say i take uh, soapy water or some oil uh, as my lubricant so that because uh, a fluid can flow easily like oil or uh, soapy water it actually fills up the so it actually sits in this sort of way it actually fills these um, empty spaces that between the grooves in this way so the, uh, the the lubricant fills these spaces when I put it and now when it so it just fills these spaces so that is my my lubricant is in black so this is my lubricant here and it fills these spaces and now you see this this side is very smooth it is almost perfectly smooth it might not be exactly perfect but it is very smooth now not perfect and now when I bring the second surface on top of it when I lower the second surface, um, the grooves of the second surface also get filled up with the. So I'll just take a red to represent the second surface. So this is the second surface with irregularities, and when I, when the second surface gets come in contact. Um, this is the the lubricant also fills these spaces so obviously this is the space that the lubricant can take right the grooves and so the grooves get filled up and now if you observe this surface becomes like right, this is the upper surface becomes smooth and also the lower surface becomes smooth right because the grooves have been filled up and because these surfaces have become now very smooth they they cannot interlock because the grooves have been taken up by the lubricant so because the grooves have already been filled up they cannot interlock and that's why the friction is lowered is um, reduced so the friction has been reduced and now they can slide on one on top of each other very easily so friction is reduced this way and a similar effect happens with the carom powder the carom powder the particles of the carom powder are so small that they fill up these small grooves so remember the grooves on every surface is microscopic but the powder the particles of the carom powder they are very small and they just fill up these small grooves so maybe one particle fills up this groove and the particle fills up these grooves and the small particles just fill up all these grooves and that makes that again makes the interlocking difficult and the surfaces become smooth and that is why after putting up the putting the powder you can very easily play carom and the pieces of the, the carom pieces slide very easily so that is how lubrication works and that is the very simple way you reduce um, you reduce friction so also the, another, the second way that I had told you to re reduce friction was to um, smoothen something so how do we smoothen something well if we have something like this and if you want to reduce the friction on the surface you just take any other surface which also has irregularities and you take this to and rub them against each other what will happen is these uh, because when you rub them these irregular projections will quickly just break off on both the surfaces so what you can do is you just rub these two surfaces against each other and these irregularities will then break off and that is how you know wood polishing so if you ever seen wood being polished they take sandpaper and rub the surface of the wood so i have some wood, um, sandpaper with me but i just it's just unavailable right now yeah so they just rub the surface of the wood and that makes the uh, wood smooth so yeah if you take uh, one rough surface actually two rough surfaces and then rub them against each other these irregular irregular projection will break off and if you see when they break up break off just like this on both the surfaces you are left with something that uh, that is much more smooth see this has less irregularities as compared to the one before rubbing and yeah you've made the two surfaces smoother and now you've reduced friction so that is the second method of uh, reducing friction and those are the two ways in which we reduce friction for various purposes basically to reduce the heat generated and to reduce wear and tear
so yeah and that is the basic thing in this video so that's it for this video